everyone a very smart strategy to prepare in an uncertain exam is glancing through the questions it enables a student to help analyze the vastness of the subject as well as the depth of the subject on a similar strategy we have come up with the gs bridge course which enable the students a glance through the subject itself which is important before a student joins a gs foundation course the rationale is in a gs foundation course starts from the advanced level concepts and it is assumed that the student knows the basics the result of this is that the student is left confused for nearly 3 to 4 months here in to fill the gap we have come up with the gs bridge course which focuses on covering the basics as well as improving the learning it is also possible that a student can cover the basic books and basic concepts by himself or herself however it requires more time taking a cue from the pythagoras theorem a student invest this much amount of effort in learning by himself or herself however if the same preparation is directed that saves the effort and time of the student by quite a substantial amount of time when we say that certain basics are assumed from the students let's understand what are the basics that are assumed that a student would know taking example from geography itself so certain assumption like the difference between air and atmosphere the difference between ecosystem and biosphere as well as certain details of the continent it is assumed that the students would know this when we start with humidity we directly start with relative humidity absolute humidity and it is assumed that the student knows whether humidity is about moisture alone water vapor alone or both certain technical terms like demography like the difference between food grains and cereals is assumed that a student would know and the result is that even a student feels hesitant in asking such doubts in a gs foundation class also certain misconceived notions about the subject would be clarified in the gs bridge course let's understand by an example so whenever we talk about river all that comes in the mind of a student is the physical features alone like the valleys like the plains like the deltas but river is not just about the physical features alone it is more about human aspects to it like the rivers have been the cradles of human civilization rivers are linked to resources they are linked to industries certain civilizations like the indus valley civilization the mesopotamian civilization the assyrians the phoenicians the civilization at huang he also about the other things like the waterways the way of living is associated with rivers so it is not just physical features alone and such is the power of geography and the natural forces that studying geography become a humbling experience in itself we human are just minuscule in the history and the timeline of the earth so the components of geography are not just the natural features like the lithosphere the atmosphere the hydrosphere and biosphere many students know this but geography is also about the human aspects to it like the industries the roads the bridges the buildings the settlement type so this all also are studied under geography apart from it the demographic aspects like the individual the community the education 
the sex ratio, the literacy ratio, this all is also studied in geography. And also the current related aspects. Presently, the climate change is not in news. The phenomena like the polar vortex, the jet stream, hurricanes, cyclones, these are in news. But a student would find it difficult to understand these things unless a student has a basics in place. So the theme of GS Bridge course is back to the basics. Let's start by understanding the basics of the atmosphere. So what is atmosphere? What is the composition of the atmosphere? What component of the atmosphere is related to global warming? Let's start with the basics first. And we also have this question first approach in the GS Bridge course. So trying to cover questions from your examinations like UPSC. So when we talk about what are the questions that have come from this topic, a very simple and basic questions like a jet craft fly very easily and smoothly in the lower stratosphere and what could be the possible explanation of this. The first statement talks about no clouds, no water vapor, no vertical wind in the stratosphere and then we have to select the correct answers. So unless our basics are in place, a student would get confused. Similarly, another question that has been asked is about the layer called as ionosphere which facilitates radio communication and the reason is whether it has got ozone which causes reflection and also about certain basics about your radio waves. So, it is very important to understand that if our basics are in place, then only we will be able to solve such questions. Talking about the basics of the atmosphere, what is atmosphere? Atmosphere is basically an envelope of gas, the envelope of gas that surrounds our earth and it is not separated from the earth but is a part of earth atmospheric system. What is the boundary of the atmosphere? There is no fixed boundary of the atmosphere and the atmosphere as it increases in the height, merges with the space. So this is an atmosphere. What is the composition of the atmosphere? So if we talk about the composition of the atmosphere, nearly 99% of the atmosphere is composed of the nitrogen and oxygen, with nitrogen being 78% and oxygen being 21%. Rest of the gases like the argon which is 0.93% and the other gases are called as the trace gases which comprises of your xenon, neon, helium, krypton, carbon dioxide. This composition is fairly known to you but have we analyzed that nearly 99% of the atmosphere which is your nitrogen dioxide and your oxygen has no role to play in your global warming. It is the minuscule portion of the earth like the carbon dioxide which has greater role in global warming. Also the composition of the atmosphere can be further analyzed if we talk about the life giving gases like O2 and CO2. O2 being required by humans and CO2 being required by the plants. The composition like the 99% of it being comprises of the oxygen and nitrogen oxide is the composition of the dry air. Atmosphere also includes wa water vapor in it and the percentage of the water vapor ranges from 0 to 4 percent. It is not just these gases but the dust particles and aerosols 
are also the part of your atmosphere. An important analysis that we can have from the composition of the atmosphere is a gas, an important gas like the carbon monoxide is not a part of atmosphere naturally. Done and done. Certain tricks to remember the composition of atmosphere are NOACH. So it is your nitrogen dioxide followed by oxygen, followed by argon, followed by carbon dioxide and your hydrogen or helium. So a short trick is N for nitrogen, O for oxygen, A for argon, C for carbon dioxide and H for helium. So what is the nature of atmosphere? When we talk about nature of the atmosphere, what we have seen is the atmosphere is a thin blanket of air that goes up from the earth's surface. But what is the nature of atmosphere? So up to 80 kilometers, the atmosphere is called as homosphere. The reason is an atmosphere up to 80 kilometers is well mixed. It's like a mechanical mixture. So if we take any single pocket, it would have 78% of NO2, 21% of O2, then other gases like argon, carbon, hydrogen, helium. Any packet that we take would have the same chemical composition and the gases are not segregated according to their weight. Therefore, HOMO. HOMO means alike. So, a like sphere wherein the atmosphere behaves like a single layer and the percentage of gases is fixed. This takes place up to 80 km. Beyond 80 km, the gases are segregated like it is followed by nitrogen, then oxygen, then helium and then hydrogen. So, there is segregation of gases beyond these 80 km. Generally, we all are aware of the layering of the atmosphere, which is your troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. But do we know that? How is this classification? But do we know what is the basis of this classification? Why, are, why is atmosphere talked about as troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere? The classification basis is your the rate of cooling and the rate of heating, that is the temperature parameters. When we talk about the layering from below, it is troposphere up to 20 kilometers, stratosphere up to 50 kilometers, mesosphere up to 80 kilometers and followed by your thermosphere. Let's analyze each of the layers in a bit detail. So the first layer is your troposphere layer. It is the lowermost layer. This is your lowermost layer which is not equal in height across the poles and your equator. So if we talk about this being your equator and this being your pole. Here in the troposphere is greater in height at the equator compared to that at the poles. So at the poles it is around 8 kilometer. Whereas at the equator it is about 18 km. The reason is the equator is heated. So the air here gets heated up and expands. And therefore there is greater vertical height of the troposphere at the equator compared to the poles. The troposphere is the most important layer of the atmosphere because almost all the biologically activity takes place here. The changes in the weather and climate is restricted to troposphere. Also, the dust particles and water vapor is present in this layer. When we talk about this layer, you can see from here that the temperature decreases with the increase in the height in this layer. And between the troposphere and the stratosphere, there is a layer of transition which is called as your the tropopause. 
on which the question was asked in UPSC examination. The second layer is your stratosphere. Here in this layer, you can see that the temperature is increasing with the increase in the height. The reason here is the presence of an ozone layer. What does an ozone layer do? An ozone layer absorbs the UV radiation which protects us from the harmful UV radiation. So because of the absorption, the temperature increase with the increases in the height. The stratosphere is roughly up to 50 kilometer. And the question that was asked that whether the aircraft is flying at the lower layer of the stratosphere. The answer is yes, because in the lower layer of the stratosphere, there is no cloud, no water vapor, as well as no vertical wind. What happens because of this that the jet airways can fly at a very high speed and the fuel efficiency goes higher. Therefore, you can see here the aircraft, the jet aircraft in the stratosphere. Between the stratosphere and mesosphere, there is a layer called as your stratopause. So, this stratopause is also a transition between the mesosphere and the stratosphere. The third layer is your mesosphere. So, when we talk about mesosphere, the name of mesosphere, you can relate it to M being for mesosphere and M being for meteor. So, it is here in this layer that the meteor which come from the space to the earth burn. You can see in this as the meteor in the mesosphere. The mesosphere goes up to 80 kilometer. Here in the temperature reduces with the increase in the height. And if we talk about the atmosphere at the mesopause, the mesopause which is a transition between mesosphere and thermosphere records the lowest temperature in the atmosphere. Here in when the meteor burn, so there is lot of dust which is there which forms a type of cloud which is called as a noctilucent cloud. This is not cloud in the basic sense what we see but it is a cloud which is formed from the meteor dust when some amount of water vapor settle on the meteor dust and the clouds shine. Therefore, it is known as noctilucent. Lucent is something to do with light. So, noctilucent cloud. And another important layer is your thermosphere. So, thermosphere, the temperature increase with the increase in the height. This is your thermosphere. It extends from 80 kilometer up to 400 kilometer and it is also known as ionosphere. The reason this layer is known as ionosphere is because of the charged particles called ions. So, uh, because of ions, it is known as ionosphere. A special feature of the thermosphere is that it reflects the radio wave which is low wavelength in nature. And we've seen that the temperature increase with the increase in the height. Above the thermosphere, there is another important layer which is your exosphere. So, this is your exosphere. Nothing much is known about this layer because it is at a very high vertical height. And it is one thing that is known is that it is extremely rarefied. And from here, the atmosphere gradually merges into the space. So, this was the basic information about atmosphere. A quick revision we can go. The layering is your troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. In the troposphere, the temperature reduces with the increase in the height. Compare this to stratosphere where the temperature is increasing. In the mesosphere, there is further reduction in the temperature followed by the increase in the temperature in the thermosphere. We have seen certain special features like the clouds being restricted to troposphere, the jet, wear be, the jet airs being in the lower layer of stratosphere, the meteors here, the noctilucent flights here in the mesosphere and the thermosphere from where the radio wave is reflected.
along with short trick that we have shared about the composition of the atmosphere which is your NOACH and the various analysis that we can draw from the composition of the atmosphere. On these similar basics, our GS bridge course has been designed wherein we mentors are there to give you a helping hand. The basic feature about the GS course is it will help you understand the NCRTs, it will cover NCRTs, it will help you to understand certain technical terms which are important for you to analyze newspapers and also it will help you gaining an insight on how to choose an optional subject as you can have a glance into the subject itself. When we talk about geography in GS Bridge, what all we would be covering? So what we would be covering in geography under GS Bridge? We would be focusing upon our changing earth which focuses on lithosphere, oceans, the microcontinents. Along with it, we would be talking about our changing climate. So climate change, the polar vortex, global warming, EGE, what is EGE? Then the unexplored oceans like the topography, the resources, the ocean acidification, the look into the natural vegetation and the human interaction, what is demographic profiling with sex ratio, migration pattern, followed by the physiography of India, like the lofty mountains, hills, plateaus, plains, and the ecology basics like the endemism, pioneer species, flagship species, niche followed by the environmental issues you might be reading in the newspapers like ozone depletion smog acid rain along with the organizations and conventions hope you all would benefit from this basic course thank you